Welcome to A Stamper's Perspective, and I want to thank all of you who wrote such nice comments about the money pad that I made for my niece's graduation. So many of you asked me to make a video, and I apologize for it taking me so long to get it done. I've been in physical therapy for a long time with some nerve issues in my arm, and my PT has had grounded me from housework, cooking, stamping, everything pretty much. So I've been trying to behave, and now that it's time for convention, she's given me some leeway to do a little bit of work and give me some suggestions, and hopefully we can keep this issue under control. The key to making these money pads is to have brand new crisp bills. New bills need to be pre-ordered at your bank, so you need to make sure you call in advance to make sure that they can get them for you. I've spoke with several banks in my area and they all told me that Christmas time is the best time of the year to get new bills. For some reason they tend to have them in stock more for Christmas gifts and such. I ordered this play money online for the purpose of showing you all how to make these. I'm also going to use these for my 3D swap at convention. These money pads are a wonderful idea. They're great for any occasion, and they're such a unique gift. My niece absolutely loved hers, so I hope that this becomes something fun that you can share with the people that in your life. Some of the items you're going to need, you're going to need some chipboard. Now, I used white chipboard, the kind that comes with, from our DSP paper. And since I'm doing these for a swap, I'm only doing 10 bills in a package. It's enough to get the idea of what I'm doing. And I have, oh, 10 or 11 stacks here together that I'm going to show you how to put them together. And then I'll show you later how to separate them. But you'll only have to glue one end instead of having to glue every, I'm doing 100 of these, so having to do every single one individually would be quite time consuming. It'll be much easier to do 10 or 11 at a time and then take them apart. You're also going to need large binder clips. I use about five of these per package for package of uh, or pad of envelope or pad of money. I'm sorry that I should say. And I have a couple scraps of chipboard that are slightly smaller. And I'll show you why we're going to use those. They're to protect the money when we put the clips on to keep from indenting putting indentations in the money in the back of the chipboard. Let's go ahead and assemble this stack of money that I have right here. And basically what you're going to do, and you can just do one stack if you want, like I said, I'm doing several to, to make my life easier. And you want to stack them and make sure they're as straight and even as you possibly can get them and it I will tell you it seems to be easier for me to do this on my granite countertop it just seems to stack a little bit better and then you're going to lay one of these on here and one behind here and if it's still stacked good then you'll go ahead and you will put a clip here I clip every end except for the end that I want to glue and I'm going to glue it with my money there so I'm not going to put a clip there so I start out with three the other thing you're going to need is you're going to need it's called precision padding compound this is my bottle and I just wanted to show you a picture so you can kind of see what you might be looking for I bought this so many years ago I do not even remember what it cost or anything but I picked that up I've already put some into a little glass dish you need to make sure you follow the directions on your padding compound I want to make a side note here some people have actually said they use crystal effects or Elmer's glue I personally would not do that uh, a lot of people have asked me if we're defacing money, if it's hurting the money. Padding compound is designed to come off of whatever you adhere it to. It's just like if you had a notebook where you're ripping the pages off. And so it will not leave any residue or have any permanent effect on the, cur on the currency. So this is why I choose to use the padding compound. Basically what you're going to do is you just need a little bit in a dish. You're going to see how little. This is way more than you need. But you're just going to put a, a, we want to have a clean brush. And you're just going to paint it right onto the edge. 
and I do a pretty good coat. If you do a pretty thick coat, this particular padding compound says to let it dry for about 30 minutes, and I have found that um, it, it is about sufficient for drying time, but it's also sufficient uh, if you do a nice thick coat that you only have to do it once. So then after I make sure I've got it on there, now if you it dries and you see spots where there's like gaps, you do want to go back and do that again and fill in those gaps. I now will take my binder clips and I have two that I'm going to do on the end so that it will keep these edges nice and tight and it will keep it will keep the pad from the pages on the edges from kind of peeling up off of it. I'm going to set that aside to dry. And I have another pad that I did earlier. You can see here. Whoops, I just messed that one up. So I have several pads and the little bills in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the first pad. And I have a hobby knife here and I'm going to bend it back and then I'm going to just do a really 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 light cut with the hobby knife and then there's one pad you can see if you would be making several of these how and especially if you're only going to do like ten dollars in one um, it makes it much easier to separate them and you've only had to glue them once I wanted to show you real quick how easy it is to adhere a cover to these pads. I just laid my pad on here and did a score line and then of course I did another score line this way. So I've got a couple of really nice scores on that pad. The only place you want to put adhesive is on this back and then you would adhere it in like this. That way when your flap comes open, your pad is still exposed on the sides and you can easily tear off your dollars as you want to spend them. So I just want to thank you so much for stopping by A Stamper's Perspective. And if you have any other questions, please let me know. I'm always happy to answer them. Have a great day. Bye-bye.